Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Les Vinogradov. I am a cultural manager and co-founder of the Zapravka Initiative for Art Residency Support. Uh, welcome to How to Inhabit Instability, the first online showcase of Ukrainian art residencies organized by Zapravka in cooperation with Res Artis, Worldwide Network of Arts Residencies. Uh, the title of today's event uh, mirrors the title of the Res Artists Conference that was to take place in Kyiv, Ukraine, in September 2022 as a joint project of Isolatia, Platform for Cultural Initiatives, uh, House of Europe, uh, Goethe Institute in Ukraine, and the Ukrainian Institute. Uh, as you may guess, uh, that event never happened due to the full-scale uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. However, the meaning of our title and the whole premise of introducing Ukrainian art residencies to the professional community around the globe uh, did not lose its relevance. Uh, quite on the contrary, uh, this ongoing war has shown that cultural initiatives are indeed capable of inhabiting instability, adapting to the harshest conditions and thriving in times of even the greatest crisis. Today we will hear five uh, first-hand stories uh, of Ukrainian art residencies, uh, their lives and activities before and during the full-scale war. Uh, we will also briefly introduce Zapravka and give you a little bit of context about the residency landscape in Ukraine in general. Uh, to save time, uh, we will kindly ask you to leave your questions in the Q&A section of our call and we will be happy to answer them all in the final part of our meeting. Uh, I would like to remind you that the language of today's meeting is English, so please ask your questions in English as well, if that is possible, of course. Uh, this event is being recorded and you will all receive a link to the video afterward. Uh, we encourage you to share it with your colleagues who could not attend today. Uh, last but not least, uh, today's reality of Ukraine is that at any point during our event, an air raid alarm may start. And we strongly suggest all of our participants from Ukraine uh, be mindful of the alerts and move to a shelter if necessary. And now it is my absolute pleasure to give the floor to Josephine Mead, uh, the Communication and Program Coordinator at Res Artis. Josephine, the mic is yours. Thank you very much, Liz. Um, so I'm calling from Res Artis Worldwide Network of Arts Residencies, and I'm calling in from Jajawaran country today, which isn't too far from Wurundjeri country, where our International Australian Headquarters is based. Um, so we're a 30-year-old network of arts residency operators from all over the globe, and our network comprises of more than 650 vetted members in over 80 countries. We're the worldwide professional body for the field, ensuring sustainability and growth by providing resources for our members, and we support and connect residencies, engage and advocate for the importance of arts residencies in today's society, and provide recommendations towards cultural mobility research and policy. And we're committed to building an arts residency sector that centers access, inclusion, and sustainability. And as Liz mentioned, we were going to hold our 2022 conference in Kiev. And when we devised a title for the conference, we could never have imagined the horrific events that have since unfolded. As Liz mentioned, the conference was canceled. Uh, Res Artis redirected our resources that would have brought the conference to fruition to promote the work of our partners and like-minded organisations that were working to offer aid and emergency residencies over the past few years. And we believe that arts residencies are founded on principles of intercultural understanding, diversity and cross-cultural exchange, and that they have the ability to transcend borders. We were deeply touched to see our members from all over the globe working to offer support to Ukrainian artists and cultural workers. And we've been really inspired by the strength of Ukrainian artists and arts residency programs who have been uncompromising in their dedication to the creation of new work and um, to finding models for exchange, despite the circumstances of war that they've been found within. At Res Artis, we've been running regional meetings to ascertain the needs, problems and possibilities that are faced by residency hosts in certain geographic locations. And it's a real pleasure um, and privilege to be able to hear from an amazing group of Ukrainian voices today. So thank you. I'll um, pass back to you, Les. I'm looking forward to hearing from you all. 
Thank you so much, Josephine. Uh, and before we give the mic to the residencies, uh, just a few words about who we are. And please let me share my screen for a second. So uh, Zapravka is an inter-institutional initiative for art residency support that was founded in 2020. Uh, we are in a somewhat unique uh, position of being essentially a grassroots initiative of a bunch of middle program managers who happen to work in the three biggest institutions supporting residencies in Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian Institute, uh, the Ukrainian Cultural Foundation, and the House of Europe program of the European Union. And we got together to make our institutions better attuned to the needs of art residencies in Ukraine and set the following goals for Zapravka, uh, increasing the visibility of Ukrainian art residencies, both domestically and internationally, uh, raising the professional standards of residency programs in Ukraine, and finally, uh, informing the Ukrainian and international professional community uh, about the opportunities that exist uh, for artists, curators, and other professionals in the arts and culture sector. Uh, we started as a small quartet, uh, but now we are already eight and growing. Uh, our team always has members from the founding uh, institutions, uh, plus independent experts for good measure. Uh, over the years, we have added 17 Ukrainian residencies to the Trans Artists uh, International Database, and at the same time created an online map, Residencies UA, which you can see here, that now features 34 locations. We also have a format called uh, Coffee with Zapravka. Uh, these are free consultations uh, for art residency organizers, especially the emerging ones who need guidance. And finally, our latest project has been the toolkit on organizing art residencies in Ukraine, which we released in September 2023. It's the first Ukrainian language uh, manual made specifically for cultural managers who are willing to start an art residency program in Ukraine based on the experience of existing Ukrainian residencies and taking into account all the specificity and potential pitfalls of doing it in Ukraine. The residency organizers who you will hear in a moment are among those who uh, we interviewed uh, to create our toolkit and uh, those who were uh, its first readers. So it's actually our immense pleasure to hear them today once again. Uh, but I will stop here and uh, give the floor to my colleagues, uh, Lina Romanuha and Anastasia Manulak, who will talk more about the residency landscape of Ukraine. Thank you, Les. Um, I will also share the screen with you. And uh, as uh, the main uh, audience, uh, it's like international. Uh, so we decided uh, to make brief um, uh, history um, information about um, uh, development of uh, residences in Ukraine. And actually, we decided to start it from uh, uh, Soviet time, uh, because uh, just to economy your time. And uh, here you see a few photos. Uh, it's uh, from Kaniv, uh, Cherkasy region. And uh, here you can see that uh, starting for 90, 30 years, um, uh, Soviet Union organized sort of planners um, around the uh, Soviet Union to have possibility uh, somehow influence on the uh, art field and also to control uh, the main narratives which artists can produce during their artworks. So actually art was perceived as a propaganda tool. And here is a few more uh, photos from uh, different regions of Ukraine. It's the Carpathian Mountains. So usually these plein airs happened in the summertime. And actually, one of the most famous, uh, probably it's a uh, plein air in the village Sednev, uh, because a different generation of Ukrainian artists worked there. And also, uh, at the end of 80s, um, uh, there was a movement when, according, uh, additionally to this, um, plein airs were added an educational program, and uh, in such way we can say that it was sort of first prototypes of residences. 
And uh, surely this um, residence is also very much influence on the uh, art field and landscape of Ukraine. And one of the results we can say it's like Bart Komuna uh, squad, uh, where also this uh, uh, movement influence um, uh, on the artistic um, wave and expression of artists. And actually um, later on the participants of this uh, community was the one who visited uh, international residency and one of them was a residency in the Munich. And uh, also very important role um, played a Soros Center of Contemporary Art, which was based in Kyiv. Uh, because of the financial support, there was a huge uh, um, movement in uh, um, contemporary art and they provided a lot of uh, um, lectures as well and uh, greatly influence uh, on um, uh, contemporary art scene in Ukraine. And here we come to nowadays, and um, uh, this is uh, photos of uh, private residency, extended history of Muzici. And we are happy that we today have uh, Aleftina with us, and she will say you more about her residency. But actually, it was one of the first artistic residency in uh, Ukrainian territory. And uh, one year later, uh, Izolatia Foundation, it was an example and it is an example of uh, institutional residences. Uh, they uh, were based in Donetsk, but in uh, 2014 were forced to move to Kyiv and change their focus from like um, uh, thematic residency, group residency to, uh, to private. And uh, uh, in 2014, uh, it was a, a huge and important event in history of Ukraine, a revolution of dignity, Yevromaidan, which uh, also very uh, much influenced on Ukrainian artistic uh, field. And we can say that uh, there is a two main uh, things uh, which uh, changed after that. First of all, it was a movement for decentralization. Uh, so regions uh, get more um, power and more independence and also its influence on um, culture policy uh, because in Ukraine appeared at least uh, two very important institutions, Ukrainian Culture Foundation, uh, who support to provide uh, transparent process of grant support for um, uh, culture and uh, art field and also Ukrainian Institute uh, whose aim was to present Ukrainian culture abroad. Uh, so uh, actually we can say also that um, uh, the lot uh, and grant which provide Ukrainian culture fund uh, was dedicated to residencies and we can uh, see that its influence on uh, uh, development and rise as the mushrooms a lot of uh, uh, new uh, residency and people start to use more this uh, um, tool as a format. And uh, when we faced uh, full-scale invasion, uh, surely Zapravka um, have uh, this uh, um, mission uh, to monitoring what had happened uh, with uh, residences in Ukraine field. And here is like few um, uh, like results of this uh, first uh, monitoring. And also here you can see um, images and uh, uh, of uh, Aleftina Kahidze and. Uh, Actually, uh, the reality is that after full-scale invasion, 42% uh, of uh, residences stop their uh, activities or let's say put uh, their activity on hold. Uh, and only 25 of them, uh, they continue to function in some way. And the uh, biggest part were transformed for shelters. And uh, sometimes it also were shelters for their teams. And uh, if we talk about uh, regional uh, differences, surely um, the uh, if we like uh, residents which stop the activity, they were mostly uh, situated to the uh, Russian border. Uh, but here we can also face uh, such phenomenon as uh, like um, personal aspect uh, because uh, we know that. Uh, uh, the founder of uh, Yermilov Center, for example, she organized her residency in the uh, Sumer region in a private house and also hosted their uh, artists. So it means that even in the face of danger, uh, people still keep working in artistic field and uh, supporting uh, their uh, um, environment. And uh, the main problems uh, which were um, in those time, um, 
it's also influence on um, team that a lot of uh, people move abroad uh, and uh, some of them start to um, be a part of Ukrainian army. Uh, but generally, it's a um, question of uh, sustainable support uh, because um, usually financial support was like uh, emergency type. Um, surely people lost uh, physically space and uh, funds. Um, specifically, it's um, dedicated to Mariupol and Kharkiv. Um, it uh, absolutely was impossible to plan future. And still, we are like happy that we uh, survive one day. And that's why long-term planning is something um, uh, not possible now in Ukraine. And uh, surely people, uh, because of the big uh, um, psychological tension, uh, need this uh, uh, mental support. And uh, also war influence uh, on the focus of residencies, uh, people afraid to take responsibility of life for foreigners. And surely mo mostly focus of Ukrainian residencies were on local artists. So I will stop on this uh, moment and will uh, uh, provide the word to my colleague Anastasia. Uh, thank you, Lina, for such a uh, very short, but I think very intense presentation of what had happened in Ukrainian art in general during the last at least 30 years. Uh, so as an initiative, uh, um, we are in constant communication with uh, Ukrainian residences. It is important for us to keep this dialogue, to monitor the situation, to keep tracks of uh, changes that are happening in the landscape of residencies and uh, uh, we understand that these tendencies that Lina had just mentioned are uh, also very typical for uh, Ukrainian residences right now, but due to the very changing, challenging times that uh, Ukrainian art scene and society in general are facing right now, we uh, there are some changes that happened during last year, for example. So, um, if summarizing our communications and monitoring of the situation for Ukrainian residences during 2023, um, uh, we would say that changes that began in the landscape of Ukrainian residences since the beginning of full-scale invasion that had finally um, appealed very visible um, art residencies that ended up in the occupied territories had to cease their activities, uh, namely those that were situated in Mariupol or Donetsk region. Uh, residences in the cities uh, close to the front line have transformed their activities and now mainly work with local artists and teenagers, um, like residences in Dnipro and Kharkiv. And we'll hear a little bit more of that from the experience of, uh, for example, Art Suite uh, um, Art Center. Um, and uh, art residences in the west part of Ukraine, um, which uh, after immediately after the beginning of full scale invasion, focused their activities more on humanitarian functions like sheltering artists uh, and just people from occupied territories uh, now are gradually turning uh, to their usual activities, uh, usual working format with curated residences, but still mainly work only with Ukrainian artists. Uh, nevertheless, some residences dare to host foreign guests uh, and arrange some kind of short term international hybrid residences, but it's not very um, typical due to obvious reasons. Uh, residences that uh, had uh, an institution, an institutional basis, uh, um, transformed their activities and currently organized projects for internally displaced persons or are uh, residences for Ukrainian women artists abroad or online residences, for example. In general, there is uh, this shift and decline in activities during the second war, uh, the second year of full scale invasion in Ukraine. Um, right now, prevailing formats include uh, DIY format and individual initiatives, uh, which are constantly looking for grants to support their activities, are planning uh, and supporting uh, the team. Uh, many residences exist uh, just as long as there is an external funding from international donors like Gotha Institute, Austrian Ludwig Foundation, D6, Culture and Transit, British Council in Ukraine, UNESCO or CEC Arts Link, for example. And this affects sustainability and the possibility of long-term planning for institutions and residencies. 
Uh, among the urgent requests uh, for, in addition to funding, uh, is the uh, search and arrangement of relatively safe places for arranging residencies. Uh, since many people are forced to leave Ukraine, uh, there is uh, this feeling of lack of personnel and uh, managers. Uh, it's also very relevant. And among other material needs are, for example, re replacement of electrical wires and networks, permanent administration of web resources, the need for transport like cars and bicycles to ensure mobility of team and residents and so on. And so for um, dissemination of information, art residences in Ukraine are also interested in platforms for uh, of international mass media for distribution and dissemination of uh, materials, information, texts uh, about their activities. And during this period, during last year, um, new residences actually appeared, like Platforma Ostrev in Kiev uh, and uh, um, Art Center Gem Factory in Lviv just renewed uh, their activities uh, in uh, the sphere of residencies. There is uh, um, this tendency towards diminishing value of historical continuity, in uh, though uh, because for many initiatives it is easier to organize something new than to put effort in maintaining existing residencies, for example. Uh, so the main strategy for further activities of many residences consists of finding uh, safe locations uh, for residencies and actively applying for grants to is, ensure some sustainability in their activities, supporting collaboration with foreign partners, mainly those they had before the full-scale invasion, and, and developing joint projects uh, and, if possible, delegating this and administrative administrative issues to their uh, foreign partners and their teams. So that's in short uh, the, the situation where we stand on, but um, with great pleasure, I would give the floor to our invited speakers to share more from their own experience. Thank you, Nastya. Uh, and now I would like to invite our first uh, speaker, Irena Polikarchuk, who will talk about her residency art suite in uh, Dnipro. And I just would like to remind everybody, uh, we have this Q&A section uh, at the bottom uh, of the app, if you're using the app, and you're welcome to leave your questions there. And at the end of our meeting, we will gladly answer them all. So, Irina, the floor is yours now. Dear colleagues, uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, I'm pleased to tell you more about our institution and the uh, Arts with Gallery residency program. Let me share my screen just for a second, just a second. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, once again, my name is Irina Polikarchuk. I'm director and the program curator of the Arts with Gallery in Dnipro. Uh, Dnipro, this is uh, the city which is located closer to the eastern part of Ukraine and uh, that borders a front line. Uh, nowadays, uh, here you can see a screenshot uh, from the website with the current map of Ukraine and the current situation on the front, front line. So, you can see that we are really pretty close. Uh, to the most escalated um, part uh, of Ukraine. Uh, anyway, we continue our work offline, and uh, now I will tell you how transform how uh, used to work our residency program and how it transformed after um, February 24th. Um, Opened in 2013, Arts with Gallery has become one of the first contemporary art venues in the Dnipropetrovsk region, and now it transformed into an essential platform for ideas cultivation and cultural, uh, cultural exchange for Ukrainian and international uh, art. We work on exhibitions, educational programs, researches, collection of Ukrainian art and residences. The gallery is focused on social critical art. We support and develop the policy of decentralization, work with local contexts and public spaces as well, support and develop creative community in Dnipro. Together with the team of the NGO Kultura Medialna, we created a concept of the cultural center and in 2021, Arts with Gallery has moved to the Dnipro Center for Contemporary Culture and became one of its residents. After uh, 24th February uh, 2022, the gallery transformed into a social hub uh, for a couple of months, but on June restarted its cultural program. 
uh, until uh, 2019, we held several individual res residencies, which still needed to be formalized as a program, but it had uh, it uh, they had focus on the post-Soviet and post-industrial heritage of the city of Dnipro. But uh, in 2019, um, we founded the residency program. Uh, it had a component of non-formal education, work in groups under the guidance of experienced curators, Ukrainian and international and a focus on the city of Dnipro and the region. In 2019-2021, with the support of the Ukrainian Cultural Foundation, five residencies were held for visual art artists, curators, performers, and researchers of urban space. Programs of lectures, workshops, and discussions ended with public events, such as exhibitions, performances, uh, tours, presentations, etc. And two of five uh, residencies were held in cooperation with the German organizations, uh, with the German organization involved uh, in performers, in performance, uh, uh, it was um, in 2020, in 2021, the, uh, in 2020, uh, the, uh, the residency took place uh, online due to the restrictions of COVID-19. And in 2021, it took place offline in Dnipro. So we had residents from Ukraine and from uh, Germany. Due to, uh, to the full-scale invasion uh, of Russia into Ukraine, we canceled uh, the planned residences in 2020. Uh, two, uh, because we had to change uh, our program, uh, and also we had to consider the uh, consider the the safety uh, situation. In 2023, we attempted to resume work uh, on this direction um, in the um, uh, in these circumstances of full-scale invention. In and uh, in the summer last year, together with the Dnipro Center for Contemporary Culture and NGO Cultura Medialna, we held uh, a residency for emerging artists living in Dnipro or the region. These are both local figures and those who moved to Dnipro from more dangerous cities. Due to uh, safety issues, we didn't expect, uh, we didn't accept participants from other regions uh, from Ukraine. The residency had a career or orientation focus. Within the program, various experts, curators, artists, researchers share their own experiences and practices. Um, also, they were uh, also they uh, shared experience how to cooperate with curators and institutions, how to create CV and portfolio, search for residencies and various educational programs. They also prepared a joint zine and the presentation of this zine took place uh, last Sunday, uh, last Saturday um, uh, in Art Suite. The meeting with experts took place online and offline uh, and uh, all the practices and workshops were offline uh, in Art Suite. Uh, in 2024, this year, we um, continue to look for the format of residences uh, in realities of war. And uh, this year, for example, in cooperation with the Sunflower Initiative and the Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, we will hold a residency for artists in Dnipro and Warsaw uh, in April, June. Uh, the, format, um, uh, the, the format of the residency uh, says that we will have five participants in Dnipro and another five participants in Warsaw. They will have joined online events, practical tasks, and separate on-site workshops. And the residency uh, will conclude with a cooperative program in Warsaw and public events uh, they are in Warsaw and also in Dnipro. This residency uh, will have a focus on um, developing artists' practice on the background of war, integration into new communities, and opportunities to expand uh, their practices uh, in working with new media, for example. We plan to launch an open call uh, for this residency in coming days. Uh, so in the face of the full-scale invention, uh, we decided that um, this um, this residency program has to be um, restarted, but we still we are still looking for new formats because uh, due to safety reasons we um, can't uh, perform it the way we planned uh, before. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Irina. Um, again, if you have questions to Irina, please feel free to leave them in the Q&A section. And now I would like to give the floor to Alona Karabai, uh, who will talk about their project, Assortment Room from ivano Frankivsk. Uh, Alona, the mic is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, I just wanted also to use a chance to say hello to all of the uh, colleagues and partners who are here, also to Ira Aliftina, whom I have not seen uh, for some time. It's very nice to see you, at least like that. Yeah, and it was very nice like also to hear like um, this timeline which Lina presented, just to see the continuation of, of the residences and how they appeared. And uh, when I was looking on that, I remembered that the first residency that I coordinated was the residency of Isolatia in 2011, the residency partially cloudy, curated by, by Boris Mihailov. And a lot of the things that I learned there, I brought them later on to Ivano Frankis to the things that we are doing. So it's not like appearing by itself, it's appearing um, because of this continuation, which is very important. Um, let me share the screen and tell you shortly what we are doing. Um, yeah, I hope you can see it. Uh, uh, it's Assortiment na Kimnata, and uh, we are based in western part of Ukraine, in the city of ivano frankivsk which is closer to Lviv and closer to Polish border. But the closest point for us are the mountains, the Carpathian Mountains, and we are in a way trying to use it or to get advantage of it also due to our events. We um, actually were formed in 2018 and uh, we are a pretty uh, diverse group of people. Some of us are IDPs, like people who moved uh, from eastern part of Ukraine in the beginning of the war in 2014. Some of us are people who are locally here. So it's a very bright, like in a way, um, group of people. And we started to work here actively in 2018. And uh, from 2019, we started to make residences. Uh, since that time, we have done 12 of them. The first one in 2019 was in frames of the local rave festival. So basically, we were working a little bit more with the city and with the formats uh, that we know from some, as we call it, previous life, the life before COVID and before the full-scale invasion. And then uh, pretty fast, the pandemic came, and then we started to make more residences in our co-shared space, Hata Maesternia. Uh, we are lucky to have the space which we are co-sharing with the owners of the space, uh, as for now, for eight years, and we continued it for more. Uh, this is a house in Carpathian Mountains where we have 25 beds, 25 people can sleep there, but when we do artistic residences, we try to do something around 10 to 12 people. But of course in 2022, it was like um, all, like all set and there were people sleeping everywhere. But uh, in 2020, when the pandemic started, uh, due to the space, we could do an offline residency in June. It was June 2020. And we have done it according to all of the current regulations in Ukraine. Uh, in that times, only four people could come together. Like the participants of this residency had the current time before they came to residency. Uh, one week, they came with one car. They stayed in this house. And the local owners were not there because we did not want to put them into risk uh, to come into connection with the residents. And the residents stayed there for more than one month. And they, uh, it was a residency without name, but then it was called uh, Desperate Acts. Uh, and this is what they were doing in a way there. They were doing desperate acts, trying to figure out how art can function when we do not meet each other. It was a big point when it was uh, functioning. If you come uh, on this um, link, I will send it later on uh, to the chat. Uh, you can see some photos of it. Um, yeah, and then basically we started to work with the space more. We have done one more performative residency, but then 2022 came uh, and uh, uh, the residency started to be more urgent response residencies, especially in 2022. Uh, we have done three uh, residencies. The first one, which started on the 28th of February, 
uh, was super unplanned one. It was a very urgent response one. It was a residency with just the artist who came to Ivano Frankivsk and who happened to be there. And uh, it was uh, curated by Lesia Homenko, who also happened to be in Ivano Frankivsk and did not know us. And we just found all each other. And it was a residency which we thought uh, would be lasting for a few weeks because the full-scale invasion would be lasting for a few weeks, but it lasted for three months. Overall, like uh, around 30 artists were coming through this residency. And in this residency, somehow also not planned, we created an exhibition which was then touring uh, through uh, different Ukrainian and European cities. And we were happy that the last destination, final destination was Dnipro with Irina Polikarchuk and Artsvit. We also could show it. It was super important for us that we go west and then go as east as possible uh, with this um, uh, exhibition. And one change was for us that before 2022, we were working super process oriented. Uh, we, uh, in our residences, we try to see how we not overproduct. How do we do a residency without footprints, without production? It was also the residency in 2020 when the artists were, were working with the nature and also trying not to leave as less roots, uh, as less uh, footstep as possible. And uh, since the full scale invasion, it's changed and changed organically because the artist wanted to produce more. Probably it was a compensation effect of everything what is destroyed. And of course, we cannot compensate the art pieces which are lost, but it's like the compensation reaction to produce more and more. And we faced the very new for us situation when each residency that we have done after 2022 was, uh, was creating a lot of the physical production. And we started also like to work with that. It was a new situation for us. We never worked with such big amount of pr produced uh, pieces. And um, yeah. The most residences were concentrated for artists inside Ukraine uh, because we know that at least half of the artists have difficulties to come outside of Ukraine. We also uh, started to have emphasis on male artists, although before full-scale invasion, we used to be a project space mostly concentrated on the support of female artists. And we also uh, started to work, like not started, uh, last year um, uh, uh, we have done uh, also urgent residencies for artists from some regions. For example, we had an extra um, separate residency for artists from southern regions. But also uh, simultaneously with that, uh, last year we started to invite foreign artists um, and foreign experts. Uh, it was also said that it's super challenging now also to work with foreign artists. Uh, the residencies that we have done last year, especially the residency about peripheries and summer, one third of the group were international artists. Um, and uh, we were also doing uh, visits to Kyiv for curators and artists and have had six groups of small groups of people around five to six people coming to Kyiv and visiting also artists and residences. With one of the group we were in the residency of Aliftina, we were visiting it um, and so on. And of course it's connected with a lot of enormous safety issues, but for us it's important to do that. Uh, and in that way, how to say it, we are um, dealing with uh, foreign experts and artists uh, also as we're dealing with Ukrainian ones. They are in the same risk, they are in the same space, and uh, of course we do medical insurance and so on, but this is what we also communicate to them, that uh, even in Ivano-Frankivsk, even in mountains where we are, we cannot guarantee uh, that uh, it's 100% uh, safe, because there, is, there are no safe places right now in Ukraine. Yeah, but this is... What is important uh, for us to work with also with international artists and curators who understand these risks and are uh, ready to go uh, with these risks. Yeah, this is more or less basically everything. From 2022, we were working with different topics. We were, we were having residencies without topic. We were having a residency about future. Um, it was, I think it was a very ambitious idea to have a residency about future in August 2022. Uh, and we had a residency about commemoration and a residency about peripheries. These are mostly like our topics that we are uh, moving in.
yes, uh, would be happy to hear your questions. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Alona. Uh, so we stay in the uh, Western region of Ukraine and our next presenter is uh, Lucy Nichai, who will talk about Nazar Boitovich, art residence in the village of Travneva and Ternopil region. Uh, Lucy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hello, dear colleagues and guests. Um, I am Lucy. I am co-founder and curator of Nazar Boitovich Art Residency, uh, which has been a biggest and most enduring project uh, of my life. And now I try to um, share with you my journey with uh, Envale um, for other the past seven years. I'll just share my screen. Okay, let's start. We had been established. Uh, I see my screen. Uh, it's okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, Okay. Um, we had been established in 2017 in collaboration with the NGO Congress of Culture Activists and NGO Families of uh, Heroes of the Heaven 300 in honor of the youngest boy who was uh, shot in Maidan in the process of revolution and dignity. Um, resident residency, how to... Okay. Sorry, I tried to... Okay. The residency is located in um, a birthplace of Nazari Vojtovic in the Ternopil region in the western part of Ukraine. Um, before the uh, full-scale war started, we established a partnership with institution with the same mission and values for exchange of art residency program for emerging artists and presentation abroad. Other partners became the Kair Koshetze, Shekhov European Center of Contemporary Art, Raising Munich, and Berlin-based Gallery Lita House. Um, what is in there and how does it look? We work in and with the rural area. Uh, we have two floor buildings with studios and living spaces in Travnava Village's Barash community. We have the great because it's a sanctuary for creativity and relaxation, uh, for meeting with the local community and for sharing experience. And of course, uh, we try to inspire artists uh, on modest condition and simplicity of their village look vibe, encourage them to research, hidden context and history. Um, the core, or I named this a Corazon of other project, it's me and Yura Vojtovic, it's Nazari's father. Together we developed this project in local and international level. Uh, we aim to support emerging Ukrainian artists through collaborate, uh, collaborative projects, international exchanges and, pre and presentation. We focused on the site-specific specific research, commemoration, collaboration, stereotype-breaking initiatives, overcoming isolation, and providing the local community with access to the contemporary art. Uh, here I try to visualize, visualize the grants of money and efforts uh, of different sources for all uh, time they exist. However, I want to highlight what we achieved them um, like re relative sustainability when the local community accepted us as a local art center in 2021. Um, unfortunately, we have a specificity. Um, specificity uh, every year we add another new practice or algorithm, different formats. Uh, uh, of course, I like it, but if it uh, happens very forced, I always feel myself like the playing the chess with the universe. Uh, you see, the three first years we developed other uh, project and uh, COVID happens and we shifted to the virtual experience and additional challenges with the war. Uh, it stopped all real life international programs, but we are still alive and I dream to run a virtual global program again. And I I have some plan for the, these years. Um, of course, uh, about the best years uh, for the full uh, programs and the best experience what we had, it's with 2019 before COVID time. Of course, we had a 
uh, all Ukrainian who founded program, two cohort of international program and three local exhibition and uh, 15 public uh, workshops for local citizens. Uh, we had a big group exhibition in the Kiev and finally we organized the networking weekend for discuss art mobility. I'm delighted to share with, with Bojana Panevska, um, who is so kind and joined us and conducted two workshops for other uh, artists and uh, other manager of culture who uh, tried to start the residency program. I was totally uh, exhausted and over happy at the same time after that years. And of course, um, the karmic motto of my NGO, Be the Change, like Mahatma Gandhi sa says, I had worked again, and first challenge, it's COVID. Uh, after COVID, um, I think, after be a deep, deep depression, I made my bad decision, moved to the virtual experience. After I had um, conferences, global networking, new people, and inspiration. And the next challenge, of course, it's war. Uh, unexpected and horrific. My residency became the sanctuary for artists and their families. Mm, my rescue mission should be should, should have never been better, but I haven't even the bomb shelter. And I decided to push my forced residents to do art, not just read about the war. I tried to provide them with something valuable, so I decided to teach them to become artists under any circumstances. Circumstances and we delve into the NFT ecosystem uh, as a means to combat total isolation. But it was a time of losses and disappointment, and my most, uh, my biggest um, loss, it was my team. Now my team around the world, and yes, I think it's not just my problem. And after that half year residency was closed due to the blackout. In the spring last year, I received an offer from abroad to come to my residency for a five-day program. And I was very um, um, uh, stressed about that, but after um, I many times asked people if they understand where they're traveling. Uh, it was the women writers from the United States and from Romania who wanted to talk about the Ukrainian context. They say, yes, we, we understand, we we okay, we go to the leave, we organize uh, some meetings, and we want to spend five days to hybrid our residency project. It means that they had a like online program uh, speaking about um, um, some literature context, and after they had um, a public meetings in, in Lviv. In the same time, it's happened. In, in my residence, I start the new wave of the activities uh, after the war time uh, started. And um, this program, both sides of the borders fa face east. Uh, I um, like understand what I can um, do something very useful for, for the residents uh, who need some place for working. And um, my, the last thing what, uh, what we organized in the Nazarbatovich residency, uh, art residency was a program in partnership with artists at risk for three Ukrainian artists who lived with us two months. We organized for them the presentation and they, had, they, they was very happy because they live in a very silent place after um, living in Kiev, Dnipro, uh, moved from Herson and uh, Kharkiv. Um, okay, during these uh, all these challenges, I had made have made many new connections, and maybe which may become the partnership in the future. I dream to going back to the virtual global residency, and we could host Ukrainian artists if we find some money for the fee for them and for a new team. And thank you for attention, and we very appreciate for supporting Ukraine. And let's go to collaborate if you have the passion to work with Ukrainian institutions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dudo. Um, 
now we're moving to the eastern part of Ukraine, and uh, we will hear Nastya Hlistova, uh, co-founder of 127 Garage, that used to be based in Kharkiv. And uh, Nastya, the floor is yours. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, the Pravka team, for, for the invitation, and thank all of you for coming. Uh, I will share my screen and I will tell you a little bit about Garage, then what uh, challenges we faced uh, with the full-scale invasion and then how we try to overcome them. Uh, so Garage uh, is artist-run space. It was founded in uh, 2019 in Kharkiv. Kharkiv is the second biggest Ukrainian city and it's located, unfortunately, very close to Russia. Uh, so uh, we were uh, the city who uh, faced uh, Russian invasion in the amount of uh, the first one. Uh, but back to 2019. Uh, so me and my partner, Anton Tkachenko, who is an artist, we uh, started Garage in our own garage uh, as a space uh, that can be... Uh, the uh, the answer to the question that a lot of artists in Kharkiv had. Uh, Har As I told you, Kharkiv is the second biggest uh, Ukrainian city. We have a lot of uh, artistic educational institutions, but unfortunately, uh, we didn't have a lot of uh, exhibitional uh, venues. Uh, so, and especially we didn't have anything that would be focused on emerging, uh, emerging artists. And it was our focus as curatorial duo since 2015. So Garage was founded as uh, the space for emerging artists as, uh, and uh, became a safe space for the community uh, that we created throughout the years. Uh, as the funding, we uh, first, of, uh, of course, as any artist run space, we were self-funded, uh, fund, uh, uh, but of course, after some years, we started to receive grants and we started crowdfunding. You can also... Uh, help us to crowdfund Garage. I will share our Patreon with, uh, with you. Uh, and since it was a real Garage, as you can see, uh, we uh, faced it some uh, restrictions. We only worked during the warm season. And uh, that means that we started probably in April and uh, we had our last project in the year around October. And we uh, tried to do an event every uh, second week and we always uh, had some openings and events on weekend because we were not located in the city center we were um, in suburban area um, our residency came uh, in 2019 as the very logical continuation of our work because uh, since we worked, we were working together as uh, cura crea curators and Anton as an artist, we knew uh, people from art scene uh, in Ukraine and we wanted to, them to come to, to Garage. So in 2019, Bogdan Bunchak was the first resident. Uh, our residency was uh, very small um, and grassroots, if I can uh, name it so. Uh, it was self-funded, of course, and it was short-term. That means that all the artists who, was who were coming, they came for a short period of time, around a week or 10 days. They uh, were working on their exhibition in Garage, and then they left. Uh, all the artists stayed in our house and worked in our garage, so uh, I would say it was a baby residence. Uh, me and Anton were working before uh, with uh, bigger institutions on bigger residences, but for us and for Garage, it was essential to have this uh, very homey feeling, uh, the feeling of uh, something very um, on the tips of your uh, uh, of your fingers to have uh, the communication with the artist to have the connection with the artist and of course to work together with our community to have the direct connection all our residences always were production based uh, in 2020 we launched our project first exhibition which was uh, dedicated to emerging artists who had their first solo exhibition in our space and uh, the artists who 
took part in this project uh, and came from other cities. For example, Yegen Svistun, he came from Kyiv. Uh, they also could stay in our place. Uh, and uh, it was somehow collaboration between our residency program and our other programs. Uh, in 2022, 20, uh, after the full-scale uh, war in Ukraine started, we faced a lot of challenges. Uh, because, as I told you, Garage was mainly focused on uh, our space and our community. Uh, for us, it was very hard to understand how we can exist without the space. Uh, me and Danton left Kharkiv uh, in, uh, I think, right uh, on 24th uh, of 2022, and uh, we had uh, moved to uh, first uh, to the west of Ukraine, and then I uh, went to Graz, to Austria. Uh, I've been invited to work in uh, Office Ukraine, which is an organization supporting Ukrainian artists in Austria. So our main question was how we can continue working and what we can do to support our community. Uh, and uh, first we uh, launched uh, some questionnaires, so we collected the information and we found out that people, the first thing people needed was money uh, and uh, some safe spaces. As safe spaces, I could provide with my work in Austria uh, of course, only for male, uh, for female artists or artists who could left Ukraine, not for everyone who asked. And uh, with the financial support, we struggled ourselves. Uh, from these uh, questions, some answers. Uh, we uh, came up to some answers. First of all, our weaving project, where we collect, uh, where we connect artist run spaces throughout Ukraine, and. Uh, there, we support the communities of artist run spaces. We uh, try to uh, fundraise some money for that and to uh, make the communities grow. And the second uh, project that we launched last year is home residency pro uh, pro program, which is uh, the residencies col in collaboration with Rotor Art Center from Graz. And um, since I work with the community of Ukrainian artists, based now in Graz, uh, I see uh, the problems that they face. And one of the biggest problem is uh, the uh, lack of com communication with the artists and the art scene, uh, which is still in Ukraine. So uh, combining these two problems, we came to the solution where we invited five artists from uh, Ukraine who are still in Ukraine and five artists from Ukraine who are now based in Graz to work together uh, on the joint project. And uh, one of the main thing was to make this uh, void between art scene who left Ukraine and art scene, art, art scene who is still in Ukraine smaller, uh, just in the small scale as we always work. Uh, today, actually, the last artist from uh, these five who are coming is leaving, so uh, we are just on the end of our residency. Uh, it's It was also the production-based residency, uh, because as a small initiative, we know that uh, it's so much easier to uh, grant, uh, to fundraise money for the production-based residences. Uh, it's always so. And of course, the second thing why we uh, wanted the new production to be uh, created, uh, because uh, as we are located not in Ukraine, but in Graz, in Austria, we wanted to uh, have some message for locals, for Austrians, and our exhibition from the projects that uh, were created during the residency would be would be shown in light boxes in the public space uh, at the end of February. Um, so uh, for us, it was important to connect uh, Ukrainian artists with public space outside uh, of Ukraine. We hope to continue this uh, program, and actually now we fundraise for 2024. Uh, right after, we will collect feedbacks from artists who already participate. And uh, I think that uh, this is a very small uh, part of what Ukrainian residences can do. But uh, as Garage started, as a something small and very focused, 
on local community, uh, we are continue like this. And yeah, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please tell me or contact us. Thank you, Nastya. And now over to our last speaker for today. Uh, so this is going to be Aleftina Kahidza, who is the founder of the oldest existing uh, art residency in Ukraine, the Muzici Expanded History Project, based in the village of Muzici near Kiev. And it is my absolute pleasure to invite Aleftina to talk. Yeah, hello. Let's, we'll start with some images and it looks like i founded the oldest residency in ukraine my pleasure and wait 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 so can you see it yes perfect yeah the background to initiate the first residency in Ukraine was that I'm an artist and I visited many, many residences before. And I really love it. And I understand that it's impossible to exist as an artist when you are not sharing idea with other people. And in a certain moment, I understand that I'm tired of traveling and I decided to be more and more at home. And then I just imagine that I can be at home and to do a residency at home and can travel through the cast, through the residence and being in the spot and then the whole world can be around me. So this was the idea. And basically it worked out. And at that time when I had this dream, we were building a house with my husband and I already had this plan in my mind and at the right, you can see our house. And at the left, actually, a house for my studio. And then I had the idea that basically I will sacrifice my studio for some time for a residency. And basically, it works in a way that 10 months is my studio and two months is a residency. So let's show you more. So this is the house for my studio and basically also for a residency program. So it's small one, and then you can see how it is inside. There is one room for a studio and kitchen and bathroom, and of course, a bedroom. And as you already understand that my house is the next door, which is very, very easy to run, <laughs> to drink coffee and to see if my resident is at home, if the windows with light, or, you know, it's very practical. And... Yeah, it's like inside, but it also we can try to travel a bit. Can you see my screen? It's coming. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I show you how it's inside, but in time when it's my actually studio, this certain moment. So, but of course, I like to show you what is actually the location. Uh, as it was mentioned that my studio and where I do live, it's actually a village near Kiev, 26 kilometers, and it's really a village. Pretty close to the capital of Ukraine, but it's still it's village. You can see it's pretty, pretty amazing nature spot. So actually, here is our door to get yard, and this is a door for the residents. It's pretty separate. So my residents have their own life. No one control them. But if they want to be controlled, they ask. So this is how it looks like. This is the biggest room. And then we can travel inside. Here you see the small kitchen and here the bathroom. And this is actually supposed to be a bedroom. But all my residents can change the rooms, of course. They can decide by themselves. I mean, design the space. And here is very amazing spot of my actually studio residency program. It's archive of my 20 years of my practice, which sometimes it's also very important for anyone can apply for a residency program to research, not just me, but also research whatever was happening during 20 years in Ukraine, if to talk about um, art process. So 
out of ten all. Uh, sorry, can you please try uh, uh, um, click on that link? Because I don't think we saw what you wanted to show, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, can you can you try to click on the link now? In the in the presentation. Can you see it? No, now you now you have to uh, probably uh, close the presentation and uh, Okay. And... Can okay. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh uh, so one more time. So the location, which is amazing, the nature. Can you see it, right? Yes, yes, now we can see it. So it's a nature spot, but still it's 26 kilometers from the capital. He has the big room in the time when it's a studio, but also you can imagine how it could be for resident. And here we travel to the kitchen. See? Yes, yeah, small one and the bus and then the bedroom. But of course, the resident, as I mentioned, can design by themselves. And actually, over here, there is also a archive of my artistic practice. And all residents can also go through. And sometimes we invite also curators or researchers, which is also could be very interesting, not because of my archive, but it also archive of Ukrainian um, art process. So I showed you the space. Then let's go to the presentation again. And I like to really go through the, as was asked, the best, the most interesting projects or bombastic one. Yes. And so since my idea is really to share my um, studio and I'm an artist who run the space, still we I mean, I always say win because I do with my husband. So we wanted to imagine some concept. You can see it on my screen, right? Yes. And, and we imagine that we call our residencies Muzici Expanded History Project. Our idea was that anyone can come in the village. Of course, he or she can expand the history of this place. Very easy. And it works, basically. On the image, you can see the first, our resident is Stefka Amon from Germany, who actually donated a bike to our residency. Then the bike was used for another resident, Roland Roos from Switzerland, to use in his uh, performance. And then his performance was very successful and was bought by um, a Swiss institution. And then this bike also went over there. You know, it works like this. So let's show you more. And this project, which was, was very interesting by Steve Sherpens from um, Belgium. And he found a uh, abandoned shed. You saw it's uh, actually a village. And then he organized a disco club in this shed, which was absolutely amazing story for my neighbors. And I must tell that Whatever is happening in our residency program, all neighbors are involved. And I almost sure that uh, any residency program in little place, it's actually a model for social innovation. And then this abandoned shed was full of garbage. And Steve actually took all garbage from the shed and separated in different categories. He separated for wood, plastic, uh, steel and glass and he inspired all my eco activists in the village to look on the waste sorting as an art till now they do remember him why i decided to show just his project because unfortunately steve died in 2022 during whole scale invasion being in brussels but before the whole scale invasion of russia to ukraine took place he pawned me and was absolutely worried what would be with Ukraine. And this is the most important thing with the residency initiatives. When you once in a country, you're always with this country. When you once was in Ukraine, you always, all your heart with Ukraine now when we have such a terrific stuff is going on. So still worrying about Russia would attack Ukraine. So, and I just had a conversation with him two days before. 
So another project is also very interesting. In Ukraine, we had decommunization law processes, if you know what it's about. So we try to actually somehow reflect our communistic part, or let's say totalitarian regime part. And in my village, we had Karl Marx Strasse or Karl Marx Street. And uh, the law in Ukraine is so much about to reflect on it. And I ask all my residents who visited our residency program to write a bit about this. And when we had in our village, in the center of our mayor house, the meeting to talk about Karma Street in our village, all my residents sent the text and I translated that and uh, did read in Ukrainian. So somehow many of my residents also took part in the communization process. And you see all this uh, actually signs of Karl Marx Street on the street not so far from the residency program actually were collected and some of them went to Berlin where there is also Karl Marx Street. So of course in Berlin no one wants to remove this name but in Ukraine we have a bit different situation but anyway this was also very interesting how I involved residents who already left Ukraine but it's still with Ukraine. And of course, sometimes we also did crowdfunding uh, projects when we tried to make crowdfunding campaign to collect money for residents from my neighbors. And it worked out. It was absolutely interesting to have this. But basically, to talk about financial uh, model for my residency, we do suggest accommodation. I mean, this place and my assistant but um, the rest, it's so much about from the resident to find the support of him, of her to come. But it also, we don't ask anything from them. No, any project can be done. As you remember, the whole idea of the residency just to come and expand the history of the village by your own presence. So, and what actually changed when the whole scale invasion of Russia to Ukraine took place? Unfortunately, I was very much worrying and didn't ask anyone to come, just suggested someone to apply to residency and I could work on a distance to tell the stories about Ukraine, to involve people in decolonization process, many things I suggested, but then actually, Japanese photographer decided to come. His name is Ikuro Kawayama. And he many times said that he does understand the risk and wanted to come so much. So he came. And you can see him when we are visiting Bishop School, where a teacher on history or historian organized actually a museum where is a mixture of different objects. He is collecting some of objects from the Second World War and some objects from the recent war actions. So, and Iki is actually talking to him. So this is pretty intense time for him to visit some historians around my place in Kyiv region. And the next project, which actually took place in 2023, so I transformed my residency in actually a space where the kids, which were stolen by Russia and then returned in Ukraine, had a place to reflect what actually they experienced in Russia. So basically, me and other artists in Kyiv, it was Lusha Sai. So we did draw with them and they shared their stories. And at the moment, all the stories and the um, drawing sessions will be part of the documentary movie, which is called The Blue Sweater with a Yellow Hole, directed by Tanya Khodakivska, and would be actually a case to show what Ukraine is experiencing. And 
the residency program actually hosted the kids and we tried to help them to express what they actually had in their past and it really works so well so they didn't even plan to have this time to work together with artists but it really was very helpful it doesn't matter if they plan to be an artist or not so it was partly art therapy processes and then also i never say that their kids, they had so much uh, adult personalities and then actually amazing people I met. So basically, this is my stuff to share. And I'm happy to be with all of you. And I'm open for any questions. And my residency program also open to host anyone for sure online. And let's see what will be for 2024 in summer, as far as I understand that I do host resident in summertime. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alevtina. Thank you so much to all the presenters. So we now have our, unfortunately, quite brief uh, Q&A session. Uh, so if you have questions uh, to the presenters, please feel free to leave them in the Q&A uh, section. Uh, and uh, I don't see any questions right now, uh, so I will just have a round of my own uh, for each presenter. Um, very briefly, maybe in under one minute, could you just uh, say uh, what's next for you? So what's the project you're currently working on and uh, whether you're looking for partners uh, abroad and maybe just uh, explain in, in a few words what kind of partnership you are particularly interested in. Uh, if I may start with Irina. Um, so, uh, as I told um, earlier in my presentation, now we are looking for new formats of the residency, uh, mostly because of safety reasons. It is really important for us to work with the social, social, uh, social, cultural, social, political uh, context of the Dnipro region, um, influence of uh, war, temporarily displaced people who came there. So it is really important for us to to work. Uh, uh, in the field uh, in the city of Dnipro. And uh, that's why we are looking for formats that might be uh, safe for our pot potential residents. For now, we uh, consider cooperation with international institutions to implement residencies. Uh, for example, as we planned this year, uh, on two, in two different spaces. For example, in parallel in Dnipro and somewhere in Warsaw, Berlin, Prague, or like uh, some other city to start the residency together in parallel in, in two different cities and to finalize it, for example, uh, in in a European uh, country to uh, make it uh, safer, but to help our residents from Dnipro uh, widen their knowledge, widen their experiences, uh, meet new people and, um, and uh, have something new that could be helpful to develop their artistic practice uh, when they come back to Dnipro. So, uh, yeah, talking about uh, formats and partnerships, uh, we are open to cooperation if uh, people are interested to, uh, to develop this partnership on two, on two different, um, in two different um, places at the same time, for example, if, if we can't uh, accept them in Dnipro. Thank you very much, Irina. Uh, Alona, maybe you would like to share Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we are currently only working on the program of the residences for this year. This is also connected uh, with the answers about uh, finances that we are looking for. But like any time, we're still open to host people uh, here. And we are like for this year, we are concentrated on three things. All of them I could also, yeah, on three things. Like we would like to uh, continue to invite foreign artists uh, to Ukraine and to our space. Um, this is uh, number one. Number two, 
like as Nastya said, uh, it's a big issue to um, um, to work on the ties of Ukrainian community, which is here in Ukraine and which is abroad. And this is what we are also envisioning to work also more with Ukrainian artists who are abroad or in exile to bring them like more to Ukraine, or like like to to ensure this communication of this inside the community. And number three is a big topic is for us the inclusion. Last year, we already had the cases when we had an artist on the residency who was on rehabilitation. It was basically the artist who is on the front line. He was in Bakhmut before the residency. He was on our residency, created an artwork. And few work few few weeks after the residency, he went back there. We had the case when we hosted an artist who is near Bakhmut and who was joining us online and working on poetry and we also included it into our work. So for us, it's a big question and big need and big wish to include more Ukrainian artists who are working like who, who are working, engaging in military, but still would like to continue the artistic practice. So like if anybody of you feel like you would like to connect on some of these points, we would be very open. Thank you very much, Elena. Uh, Ludmilla? Um, yes, thank you. Um, you know, I think uh, for me, it's more important now to dare to initi initiate some new project because we have a lot of uh, connections, a lot of um, possible partnership, but in the same time, I think what for working with Ukrainian artists, I have the I need the additional role in my team is like psychologist or therapist who can help people to live together with other people in, the, in other condition and um, in the same time because uh, when I uh, when I try to do that without without this role, I feel what. Uh, uh, my my uh, abilities it's not enough because i'm very tired i can't uh, to be and creator and manager and therapist and i need a more um, like more people for for around the, some project for ukrainian artists in the same time i plan to make an open call for artists from every every country what what they if they have the, some uh, self-founded ability to come to, to Ukraine if they want uh, I can honestly present what we have what condition we have but in the same time I I think about the global um, global online virtual uh, residency for digital artists because we have the ability to create after the presentation and uh, we have the partner in Munich Rising, when where they can present the digital art in the gallery. In the same time, we're very uh, interested in that project. And um, yes, of course, I'm very proud because after first uh, digital um, residency, they um, like m equipped open gallery by digital um, equipment for presentation. It was very interesting because Ukrainian artists inspired them to that. And uh, yes, for me, it's more more important now to uh, finish my pro my my open project because when my uh, residency stopped, I a little bit uh, dived to my open uh, project, and I have a few exhibition uh, uh, abroad and in Ukraine, and I must uh, finish my project and back to. Um, and at the same time, I have you know the we we applied now with Ukrainian partner uh, partner to um, uh, partnership. Uh, to the um, like uh, exchange internal exchange program with the uh, Kharkiv and uh, Ternopil regions. Thank you very much, Ludmilo. Uh, Nastya, well, very briefly, please. Oh, you you switched off your mic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So uh, at the moment we are finalizing two big projects that we've been working last year. It's one uh, is home residency and we want to continue that. And for that, we will be happy to find partners uh, outside of Ukraine who are working with Ukrainian artists in their countries. 
And uh, for the second project, Weaving, where we connect uh, artist-run spaces inside Ukraine, we have a pretty big network already, and we want maybe to uh, enlarge it. Uh, so we always are looking for artist-run spaces everywhere. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, Leptino, uh, also. Yeah, actually, if anyone understands risk to be in Ukraine, you can come in August in Muzici. You saw the place. It's up to you to come for maybe a week or 10 days. Before the host convention of Russia to Ukraine, we host for months. This was our regular practice, but now I understand it could be more problematic and exhausting. This first thing. Second, as I mentioned about that I think it could be helpful if somebody applied to be e-resident. It means to be with our program on a distance. I think about a researcher or historian or theoretician or curator. And if there would be somebody who like to research Ukraine in war on a practice level, how it works. For instance, Muzici is actually belongs to Bucha region. So Irpin and Bucha are very close. Actually, Russian army was stopped from my village, like one, two kilometers or something like this. And if you notice, I showed you the 3D tour. And I love all this technology. If somebody needs to travel without traveling, so I can assist. Of course, it could cost money, but still, if... Uh, you, I mean, potential resident, do worry about your own life, but it still be possible that you can travel through the technologies. I'm a big fan of it, really. So it could be possible that also, if you remember my archive I showed briefly, right? That it's also would be a case for anyone who will apply and to be a resident. I have a material about first revolution in Ukraine 2004, Second revolution of Ukraine, we called it Revolution of Dignity Maidan 2000, uh, actually uh, 13, 14. And also, be honest, 10 years of this war because I'm from Donbass and the war started in 2014 in April, not in uh, February 2022. So I also have a lot of material on it. So... I do host this type of resident as well. These two things I can suggest, not more, just to be resident. All right. Yeah, that's that's great already. Thank you so much. Uh, we have three questions from the audience, and I'm afraid we'll have to limit ourselves to three questions only. Uh, I will read them, and then it's up to our presenters to decide who would like to answer that. Uh, so we have a question from Anna. Uh, please share your tips on how to stay mentally strong and motivated while working in the conditions with the minimal resources you have during these two years. Um, if anyone would like to react to that. <laughs> Can be a very brief uh, answer. I can share, but I'm in a better position because I moved out from Ukraine uh, pretty early. Uh, so maybe I, I can share uh, because I work with people who are coming often to, to Graz. And I think the main thing is to be kind to each other and to res respect any experience you have. So that's my tip. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, okay, we have a question from uh, Tatiana Malinovska. Is it possible for residencies to collaborate with museums and institutions uh, to show materials and archive results of residence history uh, on the museum level and institutional level? Basically, I open, as I already mentioned. Yeah, Alona, maybe you... Also yeah, it's very much uh, possible. I think like all of the colleagues will share that because museums are now empty and they are open for contemporary art. Yeah. All right. Uh, and a question from Eduardo Cassina. 
Uh, thank you all for the great presentations. I wonder if any of you who were running the residencies from before the full-scale invasion started had similar experience with former international residents to what Aliftina shared, uh, like who were uh, dedicated to Ukraine, perhaps came back to visit or that somehow contributed to the war effort. Like we have done the experiences with the people who came to us, they were Oh, your your mic switched off. Thank you, thank you. We had the experiences of people who came to us after the full scale invasion. There were two groups. One group were people who were in Ukraine before and who knew us and who collaborated during like long time with Ukraine and who wanted like also to support their friends and colleagues. But we also had people who were completely new who just. Uh, uh, who came to Ukraine because they got to know more, unfortunately, because of the full-scale invasion and they were interested to come like we yeah, had both cases. Yeah, maybe someone else would like to share. If you have this experience, of course. But if to talk about Iki, basically he saw a rocket from the studio and uh, and so it's hard to be honest but from the other hand i would tell that we have 25 worlds on our planet be honest and me as an artist all the time is thinking that i don't know also again about the tip so we have our world in, in a problem and be honest when you're in Ukraine and still remind to be in Ukraine, it's interesting how the residency can actually reflect on it because residency program, it's the most important about to suggest something as alternative than journalism, to talk what our world is. And from one of hand, it's like very tricky to invite somebody, but from the other hand, is actually the main aim of any residency program as in general to give the experience you never had your own home country. So this is the thing. But from the other hand, I never can invite anyone without understanding this. This is most of the curators and artists decided to still to be in Ukraine because Otherwise, you don't know anything about the world, which is very cru cruel. And unfortunately, hasn't changed having this uh, way to still use weapon in 21 century. And it's still going on. And I don't know. Me, as an artist, what to do with this. But still, it's not our Ukrainian story. It's global story. Thank you so much, Alertina. Uh, I think we have to end our today's meeting. Uh, and I would like to once again thank all the participants. Uh, thanks to our audience who were very patient and stayed with us to, throughout the call. Um, uh, technical details. So we will send all of you who registered for this event uh, the recording. Uh, of today's event and again we encourage you to share it with your colleagues and friends and families uh, we will also share the contacts of all the residencies who presented today so that you can always uh, stay in contact with them in case you're interested uh, to establish uh, partnerships uh, and of course we would like to uh, thank res artists and josephine uh, personally for uh, organizing this event uh, for making it possible it's very important uh, for us to create these platforms where uh, ukrainian voices can be heard uh, and uh, we hope that this is but a first event of this kind in a series as of course uh, these are not all the residencies that exist in ukraine and there are many other experiences uh, to be shared uh, so uh, we invite you all to follow Zapravka on Facebook, uh, to follow our news and to discover uh, more about uh, the Ukrainian cultural scene and the residency landscape. Uh, thank you very much.
and see you soon.